Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm going to review The 13th Hour by True Disguise. Cruel gods rule the steam city powered of chime, demanding worship and tribute from their mortal subjects. Kale lost her faith long ago and now protects the vulnerable. But when she discovers powers she didn't know she had, she becomes chime's most wanted. Quen's job is to pursue sinners and Kale is his number one target. Plagued by visions of Chime's destruction, Quen must work with Kale to find the truth, before the gods take matters into their own hands. So I read this as a finalist for the self-published fantasy blog off round eight. There is a really substantial amount of additional material in with this book. There is a series of definitions at the start, there is a map which is really quite detailed and does work a bit better on the physical copy. I do have a physical copy because I bought this well before SBFBO 8 started because it was highly recommended to me and the physical copy was reduced on Amazon one day but yeah the actual map of the domains seems to look a little bit better in the physical copy. There is also a list of the domains and things at the end. It is a touch spoilery so I would recommend waiting until you were a little bit more settled in the world before you looked at the one at the end. This also lists the major content warnings at the start of the book. And that kind of sets the tone for the start of the book. There is a substantial amount of world building taking place in the first few chapters and there is a lot of information presented to you. It took me over an hour to read the first two chapters and by the end of it I had nearly as many notes as I would for a complete finished book review. You are in for a steep learning curve but the amount of detail here really does make it worthwhile. This world is so well built, every single detail is so carefully considered that put all together it really does feel like a place you could visit. And I found once I had figured out my place in the world with all the world building going on around me I was just thoroughly absorbed. This is almost cinematic in its detail. Added to this are epigraphs at the start of each chapter varying from anonymous flyers put up to a Handbook for the Wardens, who are a sort of police force in this world. They are taken from opposite sides, so it's really interesting the information that is added to in these epigraphs. So we explore this world through two point of view characters who really couldn't be more different in their life and their experiences. Kale lives in the Undercity as a godless, and when we meet her, she is preparing to help other people who are fleeing from their god. There's going to be a little bit more about the gods and the godless later on in this review but I'm not going to go into too much detail. She's witty and she cares so much for her friends, her chosen family and for others, even people she hasn't met. I really enjoyed exploring the world through Kale's eyes. There's, there's joy and there's still somehow so much hope considering the precarious situation everybody is in. Quen, who is the other point of view, really couldn't be a more different character. He's almost uptight. He is so certain of his place in his worship and service to his god, he knows what right and wrong is. And yet, as we move deeper into his point of view chapters, we discover that there are so many layers and hidden complexities to him. I really enjoyed both point of view characters and how they interacted with each other. The relationship between the two changes really quite dramatically through the book and I really enjoyed watching the friendship growing and that mutual respect starting to blossom. But there's still so many other characters and they were all really just wonderful. There is a huge range of personalities and all of these side characters clearly have their own stories. I would love a backstory to any one of these characters. This world is full of vibrant life, it's chaotic and it's just wonderful to explore. The magic system is truly an interesting aspect of this book because it is so woven into all of the characters we meet. It's tied into the gods and the domains and it is such a well thought out system and I really enjoyed exploring it. So there are 12 gods, they have a domain each and within this domain is its own race of people and the abilities that they have are tied into the gods. The magic fits in so well that it feels like just a natural extension to each of these characters. I'm not going to give you any more detail than that because I really think it is worth exploring and discovering for yourself. So this is a cruel world full of cruel gods who see their mortals as 
nothing more than playthings. They want to tithe from them. And each god approaches this in a different way. So some of them, it's really inconsequential what it is, but others, it is a really substantial and difficult thing to meet. Chime as a city is connected to all of these different gods, but no one of them rules over the city. And it is a place where people can come to work to earn for their tithe. It's also a place where the people who reject their gods run to. The godless do have to be careful not to pray to their gods. So Chime is a really interesting place in itself. It's It's got this Edwardian-ish feeling to it. It's described as a gas lamp fantasy. I've read a few bits here and there of gas lamp, but I find that it's not quite as full on as steampunk can be. So think more, not as dark as Legacy of the Bright Wash, but that sort of level of the world. Also, what are they? Um, the Marie Brennan books, the Natural History of Dragon books, that sort of era feeling to the world. I found the writing in this to be absolutely delightful. Every time I picked up this book, I was just absorbed. I loved the humour running through it as well, and some of Kale's observations about the world were just were just wonderful. There are so many threads and plots and things going on in this world, and I did not lose track of it at all. I loved getting absorbed into this with its ups and downs and its twists and schemings and it all just played out so well in the end. The pacing was generally quite well done. Um, obviously we had the very slow start as we built our place in this world but then it moved along quite nicely and it did have a bit of a lull about the 60% mark as people were just sort of getting to where they needed to be but once we started moving again we weren't so much carried to the end of the book as thrown at it. So I was absolutely charmed by this book and absorbed into Chime and its mysteries. So I rated this for SBFBO 9.5 out of 10. If you have read this I would love to know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and I shall see you all soon.